For our first assignment, we are going to be drawing the tulip, and it is a cup-shaped flower. The way that you treat this tulip is to put it in a, a vase with a few pennies on the bottom. The tulip stem will grow another three inches in water, but it will grow nice and straight instead of flopping over. The important thing for this particular assignment is to draw all the aspects of this flower. Make sure that you have this flower lit correctly. The direction of the light halfway between 90 degrees which would be this, this would be your straight on view and your angle of illumination is really at this kind of 45 degree angle and it's coming from slightly above or at about 11 o'clock. Because this flower is lit for scientific lighting and because it's a cup you can see that you have shadow underneath here you, and most of the light is, is hitting the flower inside the cup. You will also have to do some of the leaves on the flower. These particular leaves are not the best, so um, I'm assuming you will have more than one specimen to work with. And you should find leaves that are appropriate or are pleasant looking leaves. Tulips are basically a cold weather flower. Tulips are basically a cold weather flower. They don't like the heat and you'll notice that this flower is starting to open up quite a bit because it's under the light of the desk. What you can do when you are not working with your flower is to put them in the refrigerator. Do not wrap them in anything. If you try to wrap a flower in damp paper towel it's going to start to really rot on you. They do not like to have that wetness on their surface. Uh, for any extended period of time. Just putting them in the refrigerator, cooling them down, they will close up again so that they'll work for you on another day. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is to use ribbon. If you have your tul tulip at a certain opening that you like, or if you want it a little tighter, you can take this tulip and you can wrap a piece of ribbon around it, like so, and just put a gentle squeeze on it and close it to the size that you want it to be. And you can work with the flower in that position and the petals will all stay in place for you so that you can actually draw this the way that you want it uh, to appear in your drawing. Now that you have your flower set up the way that you want it and you've taken some stills of this flower, you can start to draw. I would like to recommend that you take several photographs of your flower. Take some that are very close up so that you can see the details and, and make sure that things are in focus. For instance, if this section is in focus in one of your photographs, it may be out of focus down in here. To so make sure that s different sections of this flower are sharp because if it's soft, you're not going to be able to see the detail. For instance, here, um, on this on this particular petal you can see there's there's an overlap where the front of the petal comes in and and uh, is seen from this angle and there are definite contours that um, you may want if you have this out of focus you're not going to see those so it's really important to take multiple pictures of your specimen and make sure that all those different pictures have different focal points so that you have all the information you knew, need when, you, when you're starting to draw. Your measuring is going to be similar to the way that you've measured for your leaves. The first thing you want to do is establish the overall form just like we did when, when we were taking drawing one is knowing what the width is and what the height is for your specimen. So we're going to mark off and basically create on our first tracing a geometric form. This is what I call the real estate for the flower. We want to measure and mark off at least from one dimension where the stem comes into the flower. So in this case my flower stem is probably somewhere in this area here. Now remember that if you're going to show the stamen and the 
pistol um, on one of your drawings, you must make sure that the stem and the pistol and stamen all align in the center of the flower. You can see it very clearly here that the stem leads right into the pistol and the stamen. So that is going to be critical with every flower that you do that your stems align with the center of your flower. In this case, this we don't see the top or we see very little of the inside of the flower. And I would say that it goes all the way to the edge. So you want to draw this bowl and it's got to stay within the confines of your real estate. You don't want it to be inside. You don't want it to be outside. You want the farthest edges of that flower to actually touch the edges of the geometric form that you created for this particular specimen. So once you've got that, the next thing you're going to do then is you start to put in your, uh, your other detail. So I like to do this on a separate sheet so that we don't have all the confusion of all the lines that we started with. Um, they're not necessary and all we're going to do at this point now is we're going to start to put in these shapes as we see them. All right, so this is our basic sketch, and now you're ready to start putting in the fine details. And again, I do this on a separate sheet of paper. So you end up using a little bit of tracing paper in order to get this job done. So now you want to look, really look at the contour edges of your flower to see what it's going to look like very close up. And now it's time to slow yourself down and look at what is happening with this, with this plant. And pay really close attention to your edge details so that you come up with a representative of this particular flower. If you just draw simple shapes that are generalized types of shapes. Well, every flower has this, this shape. Well, it doesn't. Every flower has a very specific shape to each of its details. And unless you put that in exactly as you see it, you are not going to have a true representation of the flower that you are looking at. So these little things that give it its personality are critical to the drawing.
You might need to do a third uh, fine line drawing, but if you've done a single line drawing as I have here, you probably do not have to do another step. The only thing that I have left to do on this is to add the leaves, which I will do uh, before I transfer this to um, good paper. Here are the steps that you have to go through. All right, you're going to start with a geometric area, which is your real estate, and then you're going to do a sketch of the actual sepals and, and petals within the real estate boundary, making sure that your stem is right in the center of your flower. And after that, you're going to do a nice, tight contour drawing of the specimen itself. So what you'll end up with is a drawing that is very accurate and that you can use to transfer. I've added a, a leaf to this so you can see how the leaf wraps around the stem. This particular piece is ready to transfer. However, I do not recommend that you transfer it right away. You need to get the other pieces drawn as line drawings as well because your assignment requires that you have more than just a portrait of the flower in the composition.